Hey everyone, April and Stubby here. Say hi buddy. So this is part two of my three part series about the Bobtail Sphinx videos. Just wanting to get some information out there to everyone and kind of put to rest some of these questions, ongoing questions and ongoing debate around the Bobtail Sphinx the Sphinxy Bob and fan bobs like Mr. Stubby here. So one of the big questions that is always coming up that people are asking me or I'm just hearing out there in the media world is why would we have created a bobtail sphinx? And you know really okay bud. He's not loving the camera today. Bye. Um, you know, really my answer for this is it's, it's just no different than any other cat breed in the fancy, in the cat fancy world. It's just a matter of preference, personal preference. That's, you know, really what every different cat breed is that we all have, that we all breed. You know, as breeders, why would one breeder choose to breed a Persian cat versus a Bengal cat versus a Sphinx cat. You know, it's it's just based on what the person personally prefers. If we didn't all have, you know, these different preferences, there wouldn't be the variety of cat breeds there are out there. So, you know, it was it was preference. We loved bobtail cats and we loved Sphinx and there was no such thing before um you know and it it really brings me back to another point that just kind of really always has fired me up in the sphinx world is that the sphinx have since the beginning of their development they you know, the breeders of the Sphinx have kind of forgotten where the Sphinx even started. When the Sphinx even started years ago, everyone in the cat fancy was against them. Everyone. Like, they, they were, the cats themselves were called horrible, genetic defects, monsters, the people that bred them were horrible monsters. Like, it was a disaster, you know, for years and years and years. And they were bred when did it start? I can't remember the numbers now, like 1978, I think, is when the breed initially started, and it wasn't for years and years and years until they were accepted in the cat fancy a long time. I think it was 20 years that these breeders had to just take a beating and fight to even make the breed a breed. And, you know, then since that time, now you kind of have these sphinx purists, I call them, that just want the sphinx to only be this certain representative standard of what they are, which is amazing. We love the Sphinx. We breed the Sphinx. We love the look of the long legs and the long tail and the beautiful hairless cat. However, in my opinion, the Sphinx should be allowed to have different traits. And we even as breeders back in 2005, we first started breeding the Bambino, which is the Sphinx with the hairless gene and the short leg gene. And we fought for several years, commissioned the International Cat Association to try to make the Bambino breed an official new trait of the Sphinx, because that's all it is. It's, it's just simply a different trait. Yes, their legs are shorter. It's really, you know, there are munchkin cats in the International Cat Association. That's where the gene comes from. The munchkin cat is a cat with the gene for the short legs, which is simply just this part from your elbow to your wrist being shorter. There's no, no different in any spinal structure except that. So it doesn't cause any back problems, any bone problems, anything like that. Anyway, so we fought for years, but it just, it, it wouldn't go anywhere. Eventually, the International Cat Association and the Sphinx Committee put through that the Sphinx would never be allowed to have a new trait that was any type of um, bone alteration, structure alteration, anything like that. So that, that was that. So 
you know, at that point in time, we kind of had to just, you know, I mean, we would have had to make a choice. Only breed the purebred straight Sphinx and stop breeding the Bambino or go a separate way and just start registering the cats at a different foundation, which is what we chose to do. Um, so, you know, and same thing again, for years and years, all the Bambino breeders were bashed and now it's like, it's funny because I see breeders that used to come to me and they'd be like, oh, you know, I love the Bambino, they're so cute, but oh, I would never want to breed them. I, I wouldn't want everybody to say how nasty and horrible I am and all this. And I'm like, you know, do your thing and we're doing our thing. You know, we just, as breeders, we believed in what we were doing and the Bambino cat is a perfectly healthy cat. The Munchkin trait breed was studied for generations and proven to be healthy. So we kept down our own path and you know that's what we chose to do with the bobtail. It was no different. There, There's no reason why the bobtail gene in the hairless cat mixed with the sphinx, the Bambino, makes it an unhealthy cat. A bobtail cat is a perfectly natural thing. There's wild bobtails out in the world and there's plenty of bobtail breeds in the cat fancy now so you know if i had been a breeder of you know let's let's pick a breed um let's say the ex the exotic short hair i guess um you know and i had like bobtail cats and wanted to breed bobtail cats okay great i could have got a bobtail cat and bred bobtail cats or personally just owned a bobtail cat you know but my point with the hairless gene is that I do believe that the hairless gene should be allowed to come in different variations of different traits because this is such a rare thing with the hairless cats and the sphinx cats and their hairless gene because of the allergies. The allergic rate to cats in this country right now is 15% of all US Americans cannot have a cat because they are allergic. So to me it's different than if you wanted a cat with short legs, you wanted a cat with bobtail, you wanted a cat with you know short face brachycephalic trait, you can find those in all the different breeds. There's no need to mix them all together to create one cat that has all of those things you know but with the hairless cats we people that are allergic they don't have that option they would only have the option of the the sphinx cat but if they preferred a cat with any of these different traits that are in all these other breeds then they wouldn't be able to have it and it's my personal opinion that you know that's that's not okay i <clears throat> i think this this trait should be allowed to bring in different different traits into the breed so that somebody that loves a bobtail cat and they have allergies so they can't have any other bobtail cat they can have a hairless bobtail cat or for people that are doing the sphinx with the curled ears the elves and whatnot i'm particularly not a fan i don't really like the way that looks on cats but you know if it's if it's not you know hurting anyone i don't see why there's a problem, why there's hairless cats with curled ears now. It's just, it's just a different trait. So, so there you have it. Hopefully in a nutshell, that's, that's why we did it. That's why we created the bobtail sphinx, the sphinxy bob and the bam bob. And, you know, again, it's, it's just all personal preference. And, and this is the, this is the cat breeding world, the pet breeding world in general. If, if breeders weren't here, breeding specific breeds and promoting their breeds and doing the best to bring their breeds forward then you know all of the cats would all cats would just look the same and all dogs would just look the same because everybody would be all inbred and there wouldn't be any dog fancy or any cat fancy so it's it's just you know a part of the big picture so hopefully this lays that question you know to rest a bit and I hope everyone has a good night and enjoys your cats. Bye.